All right, all right. Good evening and good night and welcome to the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. until. Today is uh, Tuesday, May 17th. My name is David, a.k.a. Kimba, a.k.a. Christian, alongside... Bingy Soup. Yeah, yeah, Soup, we're back again? Yes, I. That's how it goes. You know, I just want to say that this is the It's Your Perspective talk show every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, weekly, 8 p.m. until. We do have a telephone number tonight, 340-201-9005. You can also text us on a number as well. Uh, but most importantly, you have to go to our website, streaming live from the vi.com. Go to that website um, and click on the tab that says Watch Us Live, and you will be able to see the show tonight because we do have a very special guest in the studio. And if you're too shy to, to uh, text or call, you can definitely hit us up at an email at our email address, streaming live from the vi at yahoo.com as well. Uh, for our guest, we are in the high tech, low tech studio, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. No radio or TV, internet only, which means you have to get your iOS, your Android, your iPad, your tablet, your Mac or your Windows PC, open up your browser, type in streaming live from the vi.com and you'll be able to see the show tonight. Uh, check out all our recorded live shows on our YouTube channel and also on our Ustream.tv channel as well. Search for It's Your it's your Perspective Talk Show and you'll be able to see everything. Uh, well over 300 shows now, Soup. We're just blazing yes, the trail, you know. Uh, two Facebook pages, for sure. I uh, definitely want to qu- give a quick shout-out to CHS Class of 1982. That's the year that Soup and I are representing. But most importantly, we want to thank all our past guests. Thanks for being on our show and believing in what we're doing here. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. Tweet with us at VI Perspective. And Soup, we're moving straight forward. And off the show's mission is just to inform, entertain, and empower everyone. And I want to give a quick shout-out to our, two of our sponsors, Magdalene's Party Decorations. Uh, if you need your wedding... Um, you know your uh, your wedding or your uh, what else um, businesses uh, your business functions uh, uh, just a, you know the Home, house party kind of thing decorated parties, decorated wherever you want to get done she do it yeah she does it she does it elegantly and she does it affordably check her out uh, go to our website to get her contact information and also want to uh, thank uh, Supersonic Computer Services they're the guys that come in here and do a lot of the technical stuff for us uh, plus they also do uh, Wi-Fi and and Windows 10 and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, if you want to, uh, if you have a problem, check out our check out their contact information on our website as well. And uh, soup, you ready? Yes, I. Yes, yeah, sir, man. Bless that mic, man. Greetings to one and all. <clears throat> our praise be to the living eye. Yeah, Rastafari, Ja Almighty. Um, I'm reading from His Majesty Works. Heidi Selassie, the first electric speech. He's talking about the Inter Africa, free and united. Today, we look to the future calmly, confidently, and courageously. We look to the vision of Africa not merely free, but united. In facing this new challenge, we can take comfort and encouragement from the lessons of the past. We know that there are differences among us. Africans enjoy different cultures, distinctive values, special attributes. But we also know that unity can be and being attained among men of the most desperate origins that difference that difference of race or religions or culture of traditions are no, insup- are no insuperable obstacles to the coming together of peoples. History teaches us that unity is strength and cautions us to be submerged, us to submerge and overcome our differences in the quest of common goals to strive with our all combined strength for the path of a true African brotherhood and unity. There are those who, who claim that African unity is impossible that the forces that pull us, some in this direction, others in that, are too strong to, to be overcome. Around us, there is no lack of doubt and pessimism, no absence of critics and criticism. They speak of Africa, of Africa's future, and her position in the 20th century in sculptural tones. They predict dissensions and disintegration among Africans and intercede strife and chaos on our continent. Let us confound these and by all our deeds disperse them in confusion. There are others whose hope for Africa are bright, who stand with faces upturned in wonder and are in the the creation of a new and happier life, who have dedicated themselves to this realization and are spurred on by the example of their brothers to whom they owe the achievement of Africa's past. Let us reward their trust and merit and their approval. Rastafari, right? Rastafari lives, you know? Thank yes, you, Soup. I. Soup's a blessing. The show since April of 2014, man, just providing us with the strength and the motivation to just 
continue to blaze that trail, you know? Uh, so as promised, we do have a special guest in the studio. There she is. We have Genevieve Whitaker. Uh, welcome to our studio. Thanks for coming through and spending some time with us. Wave to the crowd. Uh, you're Good seeing, evening. They're <laughs> seeing you here, there, and everywhere. Wow. Around the corner and around here. the globe. <laughs> oh, honored to be here. Thank you. So how are you? I'm well. I'm <laughs> you, you doing good? I'm doing good. You doing good? Okay. Well, thanks. Really. Thanks for coming. We finally got you on the schedule, and yeah. and today is the day. Yeah. Um. So you know, we wanted to get you in here because I know that you uh, you know, you, you're involved in I guess a <laughs> fair amount of things, <laughs> and you know, you have you uh, as as your title says there, you're a concerned citizen of the Virgin Islands. Yes, I am. And uh, why why are you concerned? Tell tell us. Let's start with it. Why why are you concerned? <laughs> Well, the, you know, uh, first of all, once again, good evening, and uh, thank you so much um, for having me on this show. I uh, have been involved with community work uh, all my life. And as long as I've known myself, I've been busy, um, involved in, you know, just passionate for, passionate about human rights, children's rights, women's rights, um, youth rights, and uh, I come as a concerned citizen, as one who came home on a mission, um, and a very serious mission. Uh, uh, my vision for myself speaks to uh, my desire to make my home better, uh, and I came home with that mission. I went to school, and I came back with that with that exact mission, to mm. come back and make a difference, and make a major difference um, in the lives of Virgin Islanders. Okay. So early on, were you, were you, uh, did, you did you have a desire to, to, to for, for, for rights of? Oh, I, um, from very, actually quite young, um, we're talking about um, in elementary school, I was really sensitized to um, humanity, um, really young, learned about civil rights. Um, I was, you know, pretty much in elementary school learning about civil rights and slavery. And um, so by the time I reached, um, well, I had really had known actually from age nine that I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I actually got to, as a child, um, actually I lived in the States for a few years and I actually had an opportunity from very young to present on the topic of you know what it means to be a lawyer and uh, and then my interest in human rights really spawned as I began to learn about um, slavery, about the Native American genocide, uh, as I learned about the Holocaust, as I learned about African history and Caribbean history. So by the time I went to college, uh, I had, was very, very much immersed in human rights, um, mm -hmm. very involved United Nations Association of the United States, United, the UN um, Women's Organization, Amnesty International. I was um, in my law um, during my I was a I had a fellowship in law school, where uh, human and where I actually my, my fellowship was surrounding my work with Amnesty International. I established a chapter there. In fact. Um, after leaving law school, they actually established a human rights scholarship for full ride at, um, at Stetson for the study of human rights law. Mm. Uh, I actually, and I, I went, I got very, um, um, by my, I actually got completely immersed in human rights law education, uh, obtaining a certificate in human rights law from Oxford University, uh, studying hu U U European human rights law, learning the human rights of the world, African Union human rights, European um, the, uh, the inter-American system and was pretty much immersed in that throughout undergrad and so I studied international human rights law, international law, um, very inversed uh, mentors. My, I've, along the way I've had people who have mentored me in human rights law from first persons um, involved in the anti-apartheid movement to um, advocates in the United States, you name it. I have literally, I say, people from around the world that, that mm. have shaped me. Right. And starting chiefly with my grandmother, who I'm named after. Right. <laughs> okay. She she gave me the the passionate interest in humanity and human rights from very young. Okay. Uh, she helped to shape my interest um, in human rights. So coming up, what was it that you, you thought was wrong or felt was wrong when it came to human rights, youth rights? Um, so you went to school here, right? Yes, I did. I went to Catholic school here, and, uh, I, and I also went to the complex. I graduated from the Sinclair Educational Complex. Okay. Yeah. So what did you think was wrong? I mean, as, mm -hmm. as young as you are, probably yeah. 18, 19 years old now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my birthday, I made, um, um, May 6th, actually made 33. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay I'm, just, I'm just teasing you. But what, yeah. did, what, did, what did you think was wrong? I mean, you know, yeah. you're, you're young, and you're... And, and you're and, you, and you're thinking about human rights and youth rights, I mean, what did you think was wrong? Well, as I studied, as I got really immersed in 
um, the whole concept of youth rights. Uh, it has been for me uh, coming back home in a society that I, that I feel hasn't really valued young people. Uh, I actually did a survey um, when I first um, when I first came home, I actually even had a, I was, had my own internet radio program where I interviewed a lot of young people about their thoughts about feeling t essentially tokenized, um, and, and and actually having a chance to travel the world. I've traveled diff to different countries. I was particularly impressed by the country of Estonia. Uh, Estonia right now, actually, the prime minister he is 32 years old, and the average parliamentarian is actually in their 30s. The country is a young country that came out of you know communism to really be at the forefront of, of economic reform and educational leadership. They're one of the best um, educational systems in the world, um, largely due to uh, what, I, what many believe is the fact that the country is really led uh, by a youth agenda. Mm -hmm. And as we, and, and, and Kofi Annan, former Secretary General, I'm very inspired by his works. He's dedicated the rest of his life to youth leadership and he speaks on the topic of youth rights, telling governments um, how they can help shape the society by putting young people at the forefront because we are at the we are at the forefront of innovation and change, and so um, so I've been inspired by his works, inspired by the um, great Al Caribbean leaders, African leaders, um, many who have helped to shape my understanding of the world around me. So uh, from very young, I got um, in, in, in law school, I got more deeper into the human rights. Um, uh, studying um, rep reparations, self-determination, I got um, pretty deep into that, came back home, um, very involved in the reparations movement, uh, very involved in self-determination, mm -hmm. and so it all in, in pretty much in tied together, repatriation, um, etc. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm very much involved with some of what's going on in the Caribbean and also what's going on in the United States. Yeah. Um, last year, actually, I uh, took part in the, a conference in St. Martin, the last remaining colonies of the Caribbean, where um, the former external affairs advisor for the Virgin Islands, uh, Dr. Corbin, was the keynote speaker. There you had the governor general and um, the prime minister also attending a conference, bringing together different um, scholars and activists from the Caribbean to talk about what it means to be a, a, a remain a, one of the last remaining colonies. And while St. Martin is not a, a self-government, uh, they have attained a certain level of, of self-governance. Mm -hmm. um, certain measure uh, many of them are many so concerned that they um, you know about their 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 self-determination okay and their rights as, as people okay yeah. so you, you're, you're sitting down in Catholic school here and, and, uh, and you know at 8 9 10 12 years old and you're thinking mm -hmm. what what are you thinking as far as when it comes to youth rights that that was it something that you saw mm -hmm. um, that disturbed you about about the rights of youth here in the Virgin Islands, or well, for for me, it always um, it had always been. Uh, I'm a very inquisitive person, and from young I was. Um, in fact, having a lot of questions for the priests, um, I was never actually Catholic, but I did go to Catholic school. A lot of unanswered questions, and as you delve into history, it's really sad how, in fact, his history has been written and rewritten and misinterpreted. Um, and so, and religion has a big role with that. Um, I learned a lot about um, religion. Um, I actually took uh, courses in, in world religion, and that even inspired me as well in the sense that, um, you know, a lot of confusion comes because of religion as well. Um, I find um, um, that that plays a part. Our spirituality and our African spirituality as, uh, as African people um, ties into that, and, and, and really as um, as recent as. Um, this past week, you had the keynote speaker at UVI from um, from Barbados, the uh, Sir Beckles, who presented um, the commencement speech, um, speaking about honing in our, uh, you know, remaining, keeping our African identities, and that's critical. A lot of things have moved us away from that. The misinterpretation of history, um, you know, we see that even in cinematography, <laughs> where they, in, in a sense, sometimes even. You know, when it even comes down to race and color, they start to, you know, show up. You know, we're talking about Cleopatra or whatever. It's like you know, it's, you know, changing the colors of people and trying to rewrite history. Mm -hmm. um, religion has played a role in that um, as well. Um, there's good and there's bad, um, definitely with with um, religion. Okay. Um, whereas when we talk about um, understanding our history, where we came from and how we're going to move forward. Colonization has been a part of this as well, and as we sit right now, and we, we as Virgin Islanders, we are, our, our human rights are, are being uh, accosted. We, 
we don't have a full measure of, of self determination. And the, the truth is, is that the United States really, in almost now going on 100 years as we come up on the centennial, we haven't had much change political circumstances, social economic circumstances. In fact, um, you know, I mean, who knows if we may remain part of Denmark, what that would have meant. But the point is, is that we don't have, we're not part of a country that has, has assisted us in helping to achieve self-determination. Mm. Whether it's establishing our constitution, whether it's being able to vote for president, a delegate who actually has a say in Congress. We find ourselves, unlike many, many, any other place in the world, really not part of, fully part of our society. I mean, we mm -hmm. have so many uh, countries now that while they may still be part of the administering state, the colonial power, their people have a, self, a, a higher level of, of self-governance in the context of whether it's voting for the president, participation, um, infrastructure for school systems and mm. uh, children able to go to that that country to get educated things like that okay um, yes you know we could anytime go to the states and we have um, young people doing amazing things in the states and getting going to really good schools um, we have there's a disconnect um, overall and so um, I just you know I just know from from really young having been sensitized to the issues and learning history at eight, nine, ten years old, um, building that foundation, it made it sensitized me to the to my surroundings and to the rest of the world. Okay. Um, and so we have to begin to really teach this next generation about humanity, um, which is largely lost when you hear about all the shootings and killings and so on. Um, because again, they're going into school systems that are not for them um, and not really geared to um, the way in which we learn, but also you know, if you keep on spreading misinformation and, and not and, and them not getting the cultural you know education that they that, that is necessary for mm. you is that you're not really developing the whole child. Um, math and science is really great, well, but there's also history involved with math and science. Mm. And if children understood that and knew that, um, they may follow different paths. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you this: so how how do we how do we fix all of this? Um, I mean, you know, I'm sure you've probably thought about this in some, in some shape, form. Uh, how do we fix all of this? I mean, you know, uh, self-determination, um, our constitution. I mean, where do we start? And I mean, what, what, what would be your sort of approach to getting all this stuff fixed and getting it aligned and, and sort of making this a better place? To be well, our self, to be self-ruled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, um, it's, people may not be aware, but it, it really is happening already. Um, I formed a youth organization in 2009. Um, the mission of the organization is really to promote civic uh, engagement of young people. It is going to be up to my generation, millennial, to essentially, and to, with the support of the elders of our community, to help shape this. And, and really, is it is starting with education as part of it. Um, it is electing leaders who are civic and culturally economically minded mm -hmm. and those who are unafraid to make certain decisions that would move us from being what i've termed as a politically illegitimate society to one of legitimacy mm -hmm. it takes courage it takes a lot so when you know right, right now we're people you know it's a big thing about um, the whole issue of right to vote. We have a big national elections. For example, you know, of course, we had the former Senator, uh, for former President um, Bill Clinton was in fact here last night, but I didn't, you know, and heard a lot of different things. Um, the point being is that when we have political leaders and former whatever position there, we have to speak out on the issues um, and, and, and really speak candidly. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I would wish to have seen a lot more from um, our current president, President Obama, in the context of our rights as, as, as territorial citizens. Mm -hmm. and, and I expected even more because he, in fact, is a constitutional lawyer. And so 
we're, we're not, we don't, we haven't really put the political leaders in place and elected those who I think are really largely, not just a couple here and there, but a grouping of people who, from our governor to our delegate, to our political leaders, to the people who are on our boards and so on, who will run our society. Um, we um, haven't really put persons who have that that mind frame and who struggle likely with self-identity so that 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 all plays into it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you, so so you think obama should have done a little bit more for the virgin islands he could have done a lot more a lot more he could have definitely moved away from this constant agenda that puts us in a situation where our human rights are not being you know we're, we're, are not being advanced mm -hmm. The United Nations Charter speaks clearly to the role of a country that still has a sense of uh, power over a set of people. Mm -hmm. And it speaks to, self-determination speaks to our political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Mm -hmm. If we ask what has the United States done for us in all these years since the transfer, um, and in some cases it was horrific. It was, you know, us being ruled by the Navy. It was appointments of, you know, them appointing our governor to lead us, um, setting up structures that, um, you know, that make it difficult for us to craft our own education agenda. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things they've done to block that, uh, block our, our, our ability to participate um, Within the region, at the United Nations, we had to really fight, you know, really fight for our position at the United Nations. Um, you know, so it's you know, it's it's all those things. Okay. So we find ourselves um, as part of a system of people and political leaders who um, are caught up in a sense with this Americanism um, to and and have sold you know sold them sold us short because. If you're more focused on yourself, and you probably don't really know yourself well either, you struggle with self-identity, mm. you're not going to have the vision that's necessary to move the society, society forward. It's gonna be impossible. Okay. But I do see among my generation, a lot of young people that I, you know, have, I, I meet you know, regularly who have the sensibility, who have the self-awareness, um, but are, of course, antagonized because the point about it is that we're encouraged to get our education and then we come back can't get a job and so on so you know those those are the struggles and um and also speaking out on the issue certain issues you're told not to speak out on it or encouraged not to or you're going to be blackballed or whatever the case is and so um it's it's it's, it's multifaceted mm -hmm. so you have the you have among young people you'll be able to really craft the next generation of of people and the next set of political leaders who are not going to placate to this sort of status quo because mm. um, that's what we're dealing with right now i mean the our political status is one of status quo mm -hmm. um, we had the secretary of the interior joel secretary joel come and really tell us that you know we just have two options, being independent or staying as is. And staying as we are is really truly not an option because it is really against the United Nations principle of self-determination to say that you're going to have these people remain as they've been for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. Can, can, can yeah. we become independent? We, we could come in independent, but that's, there, there are many different aspects of that road. Uh, to say tomorrow we wake up and become independent, um, that's not necessarily going to be a viable situation being that we have to have the structure in place. Mm -hmm. But there are other options. Um, there are clear options. But remaining the same is not one. In 1917, when the, the treaty was signed, we were guaranteed U.S. citizenship, full citizenship. It wasn't, it was through attaching Supreme Court decisions that came before we were even purchased and saying, well, yeah, we, in other words, you know, here, you know, this is an agreement, but we're going to, in a sense, undo this agreement because we have these decisions that 
we're going to apply it to you now. Just, just really bizarre jurisprudence, bizarre you know approaches, mm -hmm. and, and and you know obviously racist. And why would we now in 2016 be still led and still part of a racist agenda? Um, where's the foresight of the, the members of Congress to say that's unspeakable that we would, you know, have the same structure we had a hundred years ago and be led by that those set of laws, mm -hmm. those principles which were based on racism. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so can we hear? Can our legislature here put for the for the present to the Congress of the United States and say, well, this is what we want to go and this is the direction we want to go in? I would say so. I would say yes. And we have we, our, our political leaders, um, our activists getting together to say, for one, to revisit the treaty. Um, it needs to be it needs to be revisited because if you're saying that in 1917 you were, you promised the people full citizenship, and 100 years later they're still not full they're not full, full they're, they're not full, full citizens, citizen, right? Um, it. It, it, it's it's just to me like it's almost atrocious. I, I think I think it's really beyond me. I sometimes I think sometimes I think about it and, it's, and it gets to be a little bit upsetting because for sure the president knows this, you know, and mm. members of Congress know this as well. But it seems but, but, but we, we've accepted it, and even when we look at the United Nations, found foundationally they push back against you know slavery was legal and so on and so forth. In 2016, we may not be dealing with. Um, chattel slavery, they have the shackles on our, you know, and, and also we're mm -hmm. working for free. But our political status, status is one of, you know, a, a problem. It was, mm -hmm. it's, it's an inhumane status mm -hmm. to be part of a country where you're not a full citizen and you're told you're not a full citizen. Mm -hmm. It is, it is egregious. Yeah. It is violative of the same UN Charter that the United States has signed up for, but it's also, it also violates other aspects of our political rights. Yeah. Under the system of, of human rights, um, it's our political, social, cultural rights. So how, how yeah. do we get from underneath this? I mean, if, mm -hmm. if, 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 if it's like that, I mean, how do we, what do we do? I mean, you have your organization, and I guess the, the, these, are just, these are like uh, youth under 18? Oh no! They, well, the board members are all over over eighteen. They um, most of them are, are young, but um, young I'm, the, I'm the oldest young adults. Yeah. Okay. Adults, yeah. Okay. So they're they're being sort of groomed in a sense to become the next yeah. set of senators at some point. Well, I don't know if they necessarily want to particularly be the next set of senators per se. Um, however, it is that we're going to need social scientists and um, persons of. Who have the knowledge, uh, knowledge, and the, the wherewithal, and scholars and activists okay. to push forward and to to go to be involved with the United Nations and the OAS and the you know, okay. and, and and there is an avenue. There's an avenue to redress wrongs. Clearly, mm -hmm. you know, um, Puerto Rico has been much more vocal and it's um, it's discussed of um, you know essentially. The, the, the right. So we, we have a call here. Oh sure. Yeah, we have a call. Okay, yeah. great. It's your perspective talk show. David speaking. Can I help you? Hey, good evening. Good evening. Um, are you are you guys on, on air? Yes, yes, we are. are. You okay, are on the air too. Genevieve Whitaker. Yes. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, um, this is you are you are one of my true young Virgin Island heroes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your favorite. Well, let, me, let, me, let me don't put you on the spot. No, we don't put the spot, Clarence okay. <laughs> Clarence Payne. Okay, good evening. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm always following Senator. you. You can't get away from me. <laughs> no, I can't. Um, good evening, Senator. Yes. <laughs> yes. I saw, I, saw, I saw it on Facebook posting. Great. And I've been following for my last 15 or 20 minutes. And I just want to ask you, in the Virgin Islands, we charge down the road with the Constitution <laughs> several times, five times. Yeah. And when the Obama's administration sent back the nine areas of concerns, the second concern they had was status. In your opinion, why haven't we defined our status before we head down the road of a constitution. And, it, it, and, if I could, and if I could say this real quick, it's like going to Home Depot with a black credit card 
<laughs> unlimited numbers on it. And you buy concrete, blocks, electrical wires, plywood, wherever you need to buy a house. You just buy a whole trailer load. And then you get to the part of it where they say, well, where is the design to build a house? You follow me on that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what Obama them concern was. You marching down the road with a constitution, but what is your status? What is this constitution going to uphold? Free association, independence, statehood. What is it? What is it going to sub, 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 substantiate? What is going to be the backbone? Because if we approve this particular constitution and then your status change 20 years from now you don't have to change and redraft another constitution well I, but let's, so but what, let's, what is your opinion on well on and that correct. addressing status first and how do we proceed in your opinion going forward sure, sure. well first of all let's, let's understand something um, and number one the oh, President Obama's administration um, could have um, definitely, because the United Nations, the United, U.S. and all other countries have to go before the United Nations every year and report on their territories um, as part of ECOSOC and as part of the Decolonization Committee, because we are actually in the decade of decolonization. Granting our full rights as citizens under the, the, the Treaty of Cessation could have been achieved by now, and it could, could have been achieved a, quite a long time ago. Um, so that is a basic, basic, basic fundamental yeah. demand. When we talk about a constitution, number one, as I had um, in my in initial statements um, in the show this evening, I really talked about, well, I actually worked on the Bahamian constitution, which was actually a redraft. So constitutions do go through redrafts and they can be amended. Our, in the context of our status, all those things could actually be dealt with all together, really and truly. And it's not to say because, um, and I completely disagree in the sense that Okay, so you haven't determined your status, but our constitution could still speak to basic principles um, that would help guide and shape our society, and could even and, and, and could have at the same time also as, as well address status under a different mission. When we talk about status, we're talking about the entire political structure. A constitution is a document, a vehicle to guide the principles, um, particularly for the for you know when we talk about our judicial branch, our, our basic makeup of government. So we can remove from away from the reliance on a, on, on a revised organic act, which really was not crafted for us. It was not crafted for us. It was crafted under the same jurisprudence of these, you know, Plessy and these, um, you know, pro-segregation, anti-women, to be honest, because of course, you know, I mean, it, it was under those principles. And so, you know, to tell us, well, you, you guys haven't defined your status, and haven't really done very little to address even, you know, what is a status commission and, and supporting that. United States goes around the world through USAID and so on, promotes development throughout this world. Big, big, multi-billion dollar efforts to promote development throughout the world. As does Denmark and other, um, you know, and, and the list goes on. So you mean to tell me that, and, and the truth is, we have not been properly, number one, funded, and number two, provided the particular supports we need and also have, have us have the sensitivity. Put people on the status commission that actually have, the, I don't, I'm not suffering from self-identity crises, but have the political foresight to say we're going to push through. Have, you know, and so I can't, I can't, I don't know, I, I don't know who all made up of the, who were made, who, who were part of the status commission, but it should mm -hmm. not have been disbanded until we actually address status properly. And we should have had the support of the United States, whether it's, you know, eco obviously economically, definitely, but also technical-wise, what have you, but also putting the right people in those positions. Our Constitution, yes, we had five yeah. attempts, but we had two of those attempts that actually the, the U.S. government was part of making sure that they didn't go forward. Right. You know, and, the, and the rejection of a document. Mm -hmm. Where at any point did the State Department get involved with the Fifth Constitution Convention? Mm -hmm. When asked for no. more money, when asked for the money needed to make it an effective entity, did we get the money? No. We got a rejection. We got a complete right. rejection and we're not going to help you economically. That was nonsense. 
complete right. nonsense and under, the, under the whole framework of decolonization. The fact uh -huh. that they wouldn't give us any money, wouldn't give us the support and so on was pretty clear. And that we have our own people who lack the sensitivity, the self-identity necessary to then carry it forward, who actually would, right, would right. just be part of these entities, whether it be delegates or be on the status uh -huh. commission, and do absolutely nothing. And nothing. the one thing you said, and I, I didn't need to cut you off, yeah. was, was the millennials. I believe that with the energy you guys have, the information, the education, and with us giving you support, Yes. That's what, that's how, that's yes. how I believe is mm -hmm. going to best be addressed. The, and, and, and I have to say this, that the relics and the fossils have to be moved. that got in the way in the past need to get out the way. You know, and this is in America and the Virgin Islands. That's right. Because in a non-binding referendum, people here voted for the status quo because there are people in the Virgin Islands that's passing through that has benefited immensely yes. from the way it is. Yes. Right. yes. You know, and let me give you a slight example. Um, uh, two years ago, I began to facilitate a discussion on the area of universal health care for all Virgin Islanders. Every Virgin Islander should have the right, not a privilege, to health insurance in the Virgin Islands. Yes. That is my opinion, and I believe that's the way it should be. It's, it's a start. And to, Do to, you the, know? The right, the right to health is a, is a universal human right throughout the world. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a universal right. Do you know that doctors signed the petition the same doctors that signed the Hippocratic Oath that promises to ensure quality health care for all citizens had a petition against me because I wanted universal health care for all citizens. Hmm. All the barber, the truck driver, the waitress, the landscape guy, the plumber, the, 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 you know, yes, yes. just the boat, the boat captain, I, because it is a travesty, you know, to think that 60% of the people in the Virgin Islands don't they have health insurance. Care. Yes, yes. And boat hospitals, don't let the news fool you. It's not just Louis Hospital that's suffering. Snyder's suffering too. Right. But the media give you the impression that it's only Louis. It's ours chaos over there. <laughs> this is so no. It's just that the Sintomi and them over here act like they, they're under manners. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, so, so they have the image of, of the elitist to act and conduct themselves in a manner that's not unbecoming. You know, but they're suffering too. Because 60% of the people don't have insurance. And listen to this statistic I'm going to give you. There are people who have insurance that can't afford to use the insurance. The deductibles are too high. Too high, yeah. 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 The co-pays are too high. So let me tell you what happens every year. Single mothers have to decide to do not claim their children on their health insurance because the family plan would take Co them to six thousand dollars a year yes yes and that that they they, 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 they they i had to deal with that pressure and i got maligned on some local radios that's with, we you know because they said they wanted to raise taxes misinformation so no look what happened last summer portola past universal health care for their citizens. Now, every citizen on Tatola has insurance. Every single body. Hmm. You know, so, so, so. I didn't want to ch change off on that, but 
I, I, I just felt the passion from yes. from from Miss Genevieve and how she brings it. So I kind of wanted to bring it home. Like locally, there there, there are people that like the status quo. Call it that doctors and entities, hotel people, you know, chamber of commerce people, yes. the EDC benefit people that loves it the way it is. Yeah. Exactly, because as you said earlier, a lot of people come in here and benefit from it, and and and, and yes. we becomes a shell. Everything is made here, but nothing stays here. All the money is made here, but it goes out. It stays, goes out to the main and wherever it goes, and nothing, nothing stays here. And with, within within the political and economic structure that we have here, our system should be in a much more, much more, much more better place than where it's at. You know, That's so. True. That's true. Call, let, me, let me ask you a question, caller. Uh, this is David. So, yeah. how, how long did it to, how long did it take Tortola to get universal health care? How long it took Tortola? Yeah. How long? How long was the process? About a year and a half. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. So that's fairly yeah, quick. About a year and a half. So that, that's something yeah. that you think could definitely be done here in the Virgin Islands. Listen, there are there are corporations in America, right, with over a hundred thousand employees, <laughs> and they have one insurance. You follow me? Yes, yes. Definitely, definitely. One insurance for Every, over 100,000 people. Yes, yes. You know? Um, for example, Medicare is one insurance for the elderly. Blue Cross, Blue, not Blue Cross, Blue Shield. The Pentagon and the Department of Defense with millions of people have one insurance. But Why but, we but have 100,000 people yeah. and we have like six insurance companies? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I. But the reality is that we're we're really we're, we're like likely not to escape from capitalism, which actually is a, to me, as I see it, actually one of the worst, the worst look, well, physical system. structures in, in the world. I mean, yes. I, I have come to that conclusion mm -hmm. um, because I mean, right. arguably, if you really think about capitalism in, in its purest form, would mean that we wouldn't have people that's hungry, we wouldn't have, wouldn't have people who are who don't have insurance, we wouldn't have a society you know, with poor people and under education. I mean, that's the reality right. of all, but rather what we see with capitalism is that the drive for dollar dollar individualism is at the top of the game and the insurance drug companies have taken over America oh my God. and have filled the pockets of the members of Boy. Congress. So seeing that we can't escape from that and the question becomes, you know, do we eventually want to be independent? I would argue we would want to we would want to examine a political structure that speaks to our value system, our uh, norms, and our desires, right. which may which will likely not necessarily, by and large, be part of a capitalist structure that is not really working for America either. Um, you have no. now socialism and so on working much better. And I mean, we talk about the best education systems in the world; they are mm -hmm. all socialist nations. Every right. one of them, of the well, top mm -hmm. eight, eight education systems in the world, they are part of a socialist nation. And, 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 and universal health care is, is guaranteed. So we have to say to ourselves, right. is capitalism for us? Is Americanism for us? Mm -hmm. uh, or can we still maintain our, you know, our ties to America as much as you know, we want to? I and then set up our political economic structure such that we will be part mm -hmm. of the wider Caribbean, part of the wider world and entertain structures where we're achieving educationally economically and so on why and are we follow, why, why are we following a system where in which and where you know which doesn't lend itself to a to a good society to a, to one that's right. not um, full of crime to one that is you know and and, and 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 even the whole education concept the whole concept of education we are in a country of a declining education system Yet and still, we've accepted all these common core standards and this and that that don't speak to our children, don't you know inspire many of our young men to, to stay, you know, young boys to stay in school and be educated. It doesn't make any sense. Whereas, yeah. right in the Caribbean, with some of the best education system in the world, are in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You know, some and and, and thinking about sending our children to other universities in in, Af in the African you know nation different countries in Africa and Europe and South America why aren't we being creative in that way why are we know, following a system that has brought us down yeah. a system that still tells us a hundred almost a hundred years yeah. later yeah. we're going to, to continue to live in a society where we're not full citizens it is beyond right. me it is, of a man. In, in, yeah in, 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 in innately, yes innately African 
people cannot fulfill the goals, initiatives, and policies of a capitalist model. We it, can't do it. It's not. It's not meant for us. Donald Trump. It's not meant for us. <laughs> he's talking for the. He's talking for the masses. You're about to understand that. You yeah, know. <laughs> you can't do that. The, the thing he's saying, <laughs> we. It's like foreign to us. Yep. We like. This dude is a human being. He's a reptilian. <laughs> but, but to a core of American citizen, he's a king. Because you have a, a large, a large. He core. represent. He represent <laughs> the majority. He's the money of the America. So what he yeah. says, America yeah. says. So yeah. we got. We got to be really, truly cognizant and, 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 and be brave about this whole situation. That's true. Uh, as, That's as, true. As, as, as Ms. Whitaker said, we, we need politicians that go stand up and, and, and go have the determination to say, you know what, the 15 of us going to go as a group and go forward to do what we need to do to better the people. And, but again, we have mm -hmm. to elect the people that have the courage to do these mm -hmm. things to make it happen. Now, keep this in mind, right? Keep this in mind. At the time of 1917, what was the status of the black people in America? Very low, and they were being lynched. There was, exactly. there was lynch mobs all over the place, yep. Yeah. yeah, they were being lynched. Yes. Some of the worst stories. So lynches. And women weren't, yes. couldn't vote. So those guys <laughs> in that era couldn't, in good faith, give the black people in the Caribbean Thank their you. freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank and you. And they got the black people in America running from dogs, Ku Klux Klan, white citizen council, murdering children, and the police, the sheriff, KKK, the kid, yeah, they, they no way because huh. white when I compare the two eras, <laughs> when I compare Sickness. the two eras, I'm like, when they had that ten year, that ten year hiatus, and they called us inhabitants. And savages. Um, um, Genevieve was absolutely correct. Their first verbiage was one thing. But when they finished the deal, like they usually do, it was a whole they different went to the other yes, part of the yes, page. different way. Yes. Yeah. And they knew if they had given us the right to vote and the right for this, what would they have done with the 20, let's say, with the 10 million black people in America? Hurt. Absolutely. Hurt. Yeah, Absolutely. that's why that's why the people why that's why we as a race we as a nation here now have to stand up and be bold enough to say yes. you know what enough is enough yes. yeah. you know we could we could we have been surviving on our own because we we are we are the only to set up people here and creation that could turn a zero into a one and we do this i believe that we do this every day yes. 365 yep we, we, we and let me tell you something with the technology today our dependent on a benevolent European is over. It has to stop. It has to it, it has it's to go over. down. Yes. You know, yes. the whole world is a playground. Yes. You know, the whole planet think it's the relations with China. You know, South uh, South America and Brazil doing stuff with um doing with Dominican Republic. But Carla, look at it. We here, we we in St. Croix, we in the Virgin Islands, we can't have trade with St. Kitts. We can't have trade with Nevis. We can't have trade that, with Barbados. Our own people. So so my that so my yeah. thing so, so that's the whole setup and what I'm talking about. And and right. and, and, and I've and I made the presentation to the, the Virgin Islands Bar Association that essentially self determination and reparations is actually owed as well to us by the United States. You have now a hundred years of mm -hmm. being undermined. Mm -hmm. A hundred years of an economic political setup. <laughs> so when I talk about reparations, we're not just talking about the Danish impact on the whole right. fact that they made off all this money from the backs of our ancestors. But we're talking about even in modern, the last like, hundred years, is, exactly. the money made off of us. And even worse yet, putting us into, because, so when we talk about self-determination, people keep on just talking about, oh, it's about your, um, your independence. It is about what the country is doing to you right no. now. And in 2016, right. keeping us right. away from our political economic rights is an affront on the human rights. It is actually one of the covenants of international human rights law. And no matter how America tries to step away from um, to, to, um, to actually ratify international human rights documents, it is now a world custom. It's customary international law. It is law. It is very strong law. And it's now going to be up to people to say, you know what, we're going to enough is enough. Is it hypocrisy? En enough, is, right. enough is enough. 
And if we right. can't find our political leaders, we can't find a mm. governor, a delegate, and, and, and senators, have, and so on, who have the wherewithal, us, yes. it is going to be up to us as citizens, us as Virgin Islanders, saying we're, we're, we're not going to continue. We're not going to wait on them. We, we, we're we're going to we, move forward with oh, an agenda to, to push this issue uh, forward. We got a next call. We got a next call coming in here. Call, are you there? Uh, yeah, good night. Um, good night. Good night. Yeah, I was listening to your to your your comments about reparation. See, the problem I have is when we talk about reparation, you can't just say you know America. You have to look at it as everybody who had a, a part to play in the ownership of the Virgin Islands. No, it's definitely. See, see. See, people need to understand, you know, this is something just deeper than just, you know, the U.S. That's right. You know, and what we fail to realize, you know, is that, you know, we were looked as as property, you know, throughout throughout the history. And still do. Of and still do. So, is we need to look at other instances. What about, you know, we have instances where... where the Jewish, you know, they were, you know, they were given reparations. You know, there were other places where they have examples of reparations and, you know, they're getting their dues, you know, throughout history. Right. You know, so, and it's funny because here, when we talk about it, it's almost like people don't take it seriously. Exactly. You know, exactly. but yet we want us about friends of Denmark. And You're being hypocrites. Brethren, you know, they are with, being hypocrites. We are know, being hypocrites. That's that's just the whole bottom line. Master. Yes. You know, how can we be friends when, you know, we haven't set up a situation where, you know, you're saying that, you know, you recognize something was done, an injustice was done, and, you know, this is what we're going to do in order to, you know, fix that problem. And I think, too, not you only you have color, too, I think Denmark, too, have benefited because I think that country has free education and free health care for their citizens. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we don't have that all those things here upon our, on our head now. So we definitely need to go forward and, 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 and put the case forward to whoever needs to get the case. You're right. Mm -hmm. You exactly, are so right. Exactly. And, 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 and when, when we talk about reparations, it's not about people getting, you know, dollars and cents. It's what about our infrastructure? What about our schools? What about, you know, our hospitals? You know, these are things, you know, when we talk about reparations, we need to be, you know, you know, paying attention to because, you know, without schools, how can we educate, you know, right. our children, you know, in, in British slave mentality that's been left behind? Exactly. You know, how do we take care of our sick, you know? It, you know, we need to look at those kind of things. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, and that's so and, I, and I think like, that's the model, and I think that's the model we have to push forward. And I mean, and and the reality is that, like I, I made a statement about the fact that the U.S. spends billions of dollars through USAID to promote development throughout the world. Throughout the world, exactly. And Denmark gives Ghana money, millions of dollars every year, actually, to promote their development. But yet we sit, we sit here, here and say. You know, America for sure hasn't helped with our development because they didn't even want to help fund our constitution. We haven't held Denmark to the but, mantle of reparations. But, and we, worse yet, are not even joined with the Caribbean in that effort. Uh, you know, not to interrupt, but we can, you know, continue to say, okay, well, you know, the, the United States, Denmark, it has to be throughout the seven flags of ownership. Absolutely. Each of them have to pay dues. You know, it's not something where Absolutely. we got to just you know, have select people because, you know, we had many owners. That's right. That's right. You know. And, 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 that's, and that's what the Caribbean is doing right now. So with CARICOM's reparations initiative, a multi-level um, step plan, they are seeking reparations from all of the countries involved in the slave, slave trade. trade. That's right. And they are going after, in fact, you have France coming out saying, we're going to give what we can right now no. before the lawsuit goes Coastal forward. Forwards. So, yeah. you know, so the point, but now here in the Virgin Islands, we back. are again, we're set back by our political leaders who 
have no interest in joining. And we talk, and we talk about political, I'm not just talking about the senators and the governor and so on. We have other institutions within the framework of, you know, of the Virgin Islands yes. that have a, re a relation. Even when we talk about our university, we have, as we speak, yeah, as we speak right now, the, the whole concept of determination at, at University of Guam, the Guamian young people at University of Guam right now are learning about self-determination. Actually, enough from one of our former Virgin Islanders who've been pushed. And, and unless we take this seriously, then no British stuff is going to be able to watch us and say, "Okay, well, yeah, we need to, you know, do that. something about this." Yes. We as a people need to realize, you know, this is something that was done that affects us up to now. You know, when when Denmark was sold to the the U.S., we were in a state of disrepair. We had no way of you know getting rid of sewage. You know, they had no hospitals. People were sick. You know, so we need to realize you know when we talk about how you know we want to establish a uh, a friendship between Denmark. We need to realize this is the state that we were in. Yes. You know, so unless, you know, unless we go forward and understand, like, we were considered as property. And still you know, are. And still are. Let's, 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 let's be real, Bridget. Yeah, let's still are. Arguing amongst ourselves. Yes. And nothing was going to happen. Yes. Again, we need we, we we have to take the we have to make the bold move and decide. You know what? You know what? It's time we make this move and go forward and make it happen. Yeah. It, it can nobody gonna come in here and rescue us. We Absolutely. can't wait for nobody to do it because they ain't doing it, and we see that already. So we have to do it ourselves. Absolutely. You know. So Absolutely. bottom line to the bottom exactly. line. But that's all the time I really have. Um, it, it was nice speaking to you, uh, brethren. We nice appreciate you your call. Okay, and you have a blessed <laughs> night. Right. Yes, sir. Give thanks. All right, you too. Yeah, so it so I I think ultimately, um, you know, ultimately, it's going to be up to our generation and those among us. Because at the same time, I also recognize there are going to be some of, of folks course. in my generation who are completely disengaged yes. with the su subject <laughs> yes. and completely not interested. Um, but it's going to be up to us just to remain here in the Virgin Islands, get together, push these issues, challenge these issues, take America on, take Denmark on. Um, you know when we you know we talk about this whole concept of friendship or what have you but it's it's really going to be about redressing the wrongs in which the, and, and, and it is exactly. about also about money it is about the infrastructure to be necessary to transform our society and because it this and it's some kind of concept where people feel like it's some kind of begging or something it, these, it's are, your rights. The, the, these are our rights. These, the, rights these are our <laughs> an inna, inalienable rights yes. that that have that we find ourselves not too far off from where we were like I said, 100 years, years ago. And, and the sad part now is that we have to actually now have these plates on our, um, you know, on our vehicles. And our vehicles <laughs> to, to be slapping our face so, every day. Well, for, for, for however long we end up with these plates, Face. but, you know, so, so I'm like... They oh, ran out, they ran so, out, so let's hope they, they stay out. Oh, they, okay, that's they, it, yes. They ran out of those plates? Yeah, they ran out. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, they ran out. I don't think they got any more, but they ran out, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, so it's um, and again, I, I, again, I, I say again to our political leaders: none of them are strong enough. Who who made that decision that we're gonna get this place? I don't know. I don't know if it was <laughs> them. I don't know if it came from Congress. I don't know if it came from the White House. We don't know. <laughs> you go to motor vehicle. You, th this is what you got to do: forty dollars extra. What we don't have again, <laughs> you know. So yeah. people wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. You know, it's time to wake up. Absolutely. It ain't no more. It ain't. It, it's now or never. You know, is it a now or never? As you said, um, Mr. Whitaker, is that they're going around all around the world telling everybody else how everybody is supposed to live in their in yeah. front yard. Yeah. But their backyard is stink and dirty. <laughs> you very, understand very, me? Very, very I'm dirty. being hypocritical about this. And, 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 yeah. and that's what really gets to me. You understand me? But, but you also have to hold the institutions um, and the national, in, international and even the United Nations really accountable for the fact that you don't even have a proper presentment of the issues before the United Nations right. on the very issue of decolonization. The United States, have they submitted a plan as to our decolonization? Do, is anybody aware of one? You mm -hmm. know, because um, at the same time that the, U, the Virgin Islands has a, has a reporting obligation, which we have Been you know, shrugged right. for a long time <laughs> now. Uh, we have basically not done our reporting. But what about the onus on the United States? 
but again if you look at the United Nations structure you have the United Nations uh, the US being one of the members of the Security Council, Council. and so n not being held accountable That's right. so but then you expect having now have a black president and having people who are more socially uh, aware that we're going to do right but we don't have that and then we don't have a groundswell of Virgin Islands even though we're small we don't have the tenacity that some of the folks have displayed in Puerto Rico where they have obviously a lot more people um, where they're demanding their rights Determined. Puerto Rico has has sued America for of this course. very issue they of have course. they have sued them and they will you know but we we sit you here sit as Virgin back, Islanders and, exactly. and we say well okay we, let's you let, you know, to follow the sky or well, something the, I don't and, know. And, and if you begin to speak about rights as uh, humanity African rights you're right as an African um, person um, we talk you use the word reparations you use the word self-determination they ha you know like that whole thing with the secretary the interior kind of making a big frenzy then up then on social media what independence how are we gonna be how are we gonna go without our you know um not stuff we need and our food stamps and our housing and so on and so forth how could we be without america your brothers i mean i mean but living? it would be atrocious that they the to, to say now okay well they're just gonna throw us out there Too and they're not, not help us yeah. you know you help us put us in this bad, bad situation. situation so take us out <laughs> so take you us know out. you have a responsibility we have a responsibility we really do and we got to start to call out some of these people who have for too long been part of our political that's leadership right. and to right. call them out no matter who they are that's right you know and and, and that's the reality is that we're kind of what we're, we're afraid of that because again we're going to be threatened by our jobs because it's going to hit you with your, yes, in your pocket the first thing. well you know um you know don't say anything because i control you i control your paycheck but if you have enough young, young people and elders and everybody coming together to say it's unacceptable then what are you going to do we march on the street because they're not paying us the right salary we march uh, and we do we love to march on the street and have our festivities or what have you but what when about really marching rights. for our freedom exactly. and our humanity Right. marching to say that just as bad as it was to whip us and beat us and lynch us that it is really bad in 2016 to tell us that we're not citizens yes. that it is unacceptable the crime that's come because of our economic instability they don't we can't see that. trade with the rest of the caribbean why <laughs> we can't vote for president why? why but yesterday we could come and vote for super <laughs> delegates to put the presidents in so Again, people wake up. And but what about? But even the super delegates, you know, former President Clinton, you know, S Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Trump, Ted Cruz, whoever you are, none of them are speaking to territorial rights. None of them, none nope. of them in their platform are going to say nope. we have some territories, and when I become president, it's, we're not going to have that. They're going to have their full U.S. citizen, and we're going to help them chart their course, either to be part of this country as, as a state or help them to chart their course to be free association to, or to be independent. We're going to be part of that because that is our legal, ethical, and moral obligation. This is we guaranteed things even now for right. the Jewish people because of the Holocaust. We've guaranteed things to them, and we have given, and, and, and we're still supporting them in their human rights yeah. you know right, you know all all the issues related to how the holocaust impacted their lives they spent a much shorter period of in, in, in inhumanity exactly. to then now have a generational the same welfare they're talking about that has been dished out to persons throughout this world because we open our hands to the people to the jewish people because of the holocaust when will they open their hands to the Africans Kent. who they still make money off of, who Every they day. still have put in a position of inequality, who with who go to school systems that set up where it's on it's horrible, it's or where you you, just, you walk down the road and you get killed because you're black. Just going you to know, school. Just going to, or sometimes even going to school. We have people who have been gunned down because they're mistaken for a suspect suspect walking down the road a child walking in his neighborhood you got to be kidding me this is crazy and to say now you know yes we have black lives matter things like that that's important it should be also the the lives of the virgin islands matter as well the people the virgin islands their lives matter too, too. Yeah. and that we have been tr mistreated all these years and we are still They're mistreated that's right and, nobody and to me, it was an affront when President it. Obama allowed his lawyer to go out and say that we are citizenship is not fundamental. That is unheard Heard of anywhere in this world. In 2016, you're telling me that 
Citizenship is not, not a fundamental, fundamental right. right. Under whose standards? Mm -hmm. America can't change the world in the context of what are human rights, fundamental human rights. So just like you, so you're basically saying, you know, back in the slavery times, we were three fifths of a man, and, and what are we now, now if we're not citizens? And a black president. <laughs> um, so, so I know, so I know, I, and I, I'm not being politically president. correct by any chance, and I guess that's part of my, you know, my challenge my whole life. I'm not always political, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't that hasn't done anything. Right. You know, being <laughs> being silent hasn't done anything either. <laughs> you know, but we gotta speak truth to power, and we gotta be unafraid. Um, I can say in coming home, it's been a journey, it's been a challenge. Um, I have spoken at an issue to be antagonized, to be harassed. I have experienced that as a young person. Yes. Because the goal is to, 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 to anybody who thinks to like how we free. think, who thinks, who, you know, who, wants, who, who wants a difference, mm. who wants to make a difference, who wants to be free, who want to speak truth to power. They want us gone. They want us gone. But I know that I've prepared all my life to be where I am today right now. I've prepared my whole life because I said when I was eight, nine and 10 that it was wrong. It was wrong for people to have experienced that. And it's wrong and then as I learned about the Virgin Islands history and I learned about where we are, where we, where we have been. And even when we talk about even the whole thing with Hovenza and so on, those things were forced upon us. Forced upon us with no vision with no vision whatsoever to say we're really going to achieve economic development for our rights. Because if it was about bringing in the industry here to then say we're going to, you know, we shouldn't, we wouldn't have any poverty. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have such poorly built schools. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have schools that have been schools around that look 40, like prison 50 years. Yards that look like prison schools that directly. are not safe for our children. <laughs> Roads that tear up your car, you know, you know, it's, 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 it's unspeakable. Street lights, street lights and but yet we roads. have people come here from the, from the state, from people, political leaders, our vice president comes here, drives on the same, you know, something as basic as our roads, Bas you know, infrastructure roads are so critical, <laughs> you know, so are what? you not driving on the road, sir? Do you not care, sir? And even on your way to the airport, airport? it's a bumpy ride, right. you know, I mean, let's be real. Let's not get so excited about these people coming here who have done, who have no desire to change our circumstances and who will, you know, kind of you know just work with the, the status quo to include many of our own people who l enjoy the status quo, who actually don't really care about the next generation. That's you talk right. about it, oh, it's for the people, um, for the young people, for the next generation, but yet you're part of the status quo. No, mm -hmm. you're not a part. Of, you're not for the next generation. Education. You're not even for your own children. Because education you know, you needs know. to get funded in this last in this last go round here. You know. You know. And, so. and, and it's the it's the funding. It's the structure. It's the curriculum. It is for us to see the teachers and the parents and you know and, have to and come the whole board. society saying, hey, have not only do we on want board. the right salary, but we want the right curriculum. That and we don't really want necessarily the American curriculum because it's a failing it's a education failing system. Addition, so exactly. that we want the curriculum that will speak to, 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 to speak to us. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it very interesting recently. I was uh, reading on Facebook. This Ghanaian man, he worked for Microsoft, um, ended up being a you know millionaire. He went back to Ghana and established a technology school in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. He's bringing the you know he has a I think it's a 99.9 percent .9 placement rate of the children and the young people that go to his school. He brings the technical people from the Microsoft and the Google and the NASA's to Ghana there yes, to the uh, university. Why haven't we done those kind of a creative things with the RT Park and the technology and so on? Where has have those fallen? Mm. Where have those fallen? So we so we're talking about a lot of people. Who have played a role in keeping us, us down, down and many people who are not getting the, the self-determination education the decolonization education that by and large should be assisted to should, should involve the united states in assisting us in providing the resources so that we can teach these principles and then we keep on electing people who are uh, to no to no fault of, to no fault of their own to be honest to no fault of their own if we really think about it if they grew up in that system yes. of the status quo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we cannot ex expect much from them from either. them exactly that's what we have and, to get and away the, and the large part of society that would that that would then put them in that position yeah to then lead us that's astray. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's what we got to keep every time we them. hear some somebody killing somebody's um, shot and killed 
it is because of our colonial status. That's right, yes. Let me switch gears here on you real quick. Election yes. reform here in the Virgin <laughs> Islands. Uh, is, is, is it being reformed <laughs> since the last election? And we got one coming up here in, in four, five, six months. Uh, is, has, has anything changed? Anything better? Well, uh, um, you know, I, I, I mean, to be honest, I don't necessarily actually speak, you know, I'm not here officially um, as part of, and I'm, I'm here with my, and my, use my own, my own words on my own, own accord. Um, as a citizen, um, I would just say that we have to continue to push forward in comprehensive reform of our, our election laws. And so that would really require an engagement of the public, the same engagement we need to address the issue of self-determination and so on. Um, do I feel that we, we, are, um, we have achieved that? Not necessarily because it would really take an entire entity, a whole commission, to really look at the, the laws around election and to then to make those amendments. But it's going to require much more than just a, a few months and so on. It's going to, it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to re really require a collective body um, to really address that. And not a collective body just to be formed, to just have meetings and what have you, mm -hmm. but really do the work um, that we saw, for example, with the Constitutional Convention and so on. Um, so it's going to need that level of work. Um, the experts are going to be required to, um, to assist in that endeavor. Um, and essentially a public that's a, lot, a greater section of our public that's engaged and, and desire to see much difference in terms of our election our election law and mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. Um, but it's going, to, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a while. Okay. Yeah, until, yeah. uh, one last thing. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> Any thoughts on Mother's Day? Being a mother, yeah. you have a mother. You said you you <laughs> yes, have a son. I yes, I do have a son. He's uh, seven years old, um, and you know, you know, and he's it's, it's, we we pass his bedtime. So he probably won't be watching this right now, but um, you know, he's sleeping. But I would say, you know, it's being a mother's a joy. Um, it is um, uh, it is a joy to to bring life into this world through you know through you know obviously um, through the Creator, uh, and to have that awesome responsibility to. Um, raise someone, another human being, to to be as passionate um, about their rights and so on. So for me, um, being a mother has um, been a, a beautiful journey, and I just hope to, and I do all of this, many of this, because of, the, of my son and because of the, the his 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 you know generation, generation yeah. and to see that he will see a much different Virgin Island or a much different Virgin Islands by by the time he's um, you know he's a, a young adult. An adult, yeah. 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 Okay. Genevieve, thank you. Yeah. It is yeah. uh, nine twenty-eight p.m. Oh, time flies. <laughs> time flies like they say when you're having fun, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure. So yeah. we want to thank you for coming out. Uh, yeah. Genevieve, Genevieve Whitaker is our guest tonight. Soup. Yeah. Any uh, any final final words? Genevieve, again, again I want to thank you. Continue to do what you're doing. Um, you. I know that the road is not easy. It's a, it's a it's a rough road, but um, we know any movement, it don't takes a whole. It don't take some million people. It only takes five determined individuals to get it done. So Absolutely. just stay on that path, and, and my prayers are with you all the time. Yeah, thank you. One perfect thank love yes. shall I live. Blessed yeah. love, blessed love, and it's been um, it's been an honor. I'm humbled, and again, I'm just glad to be here and to, to share in this uh, work. And we have a lot of work to do, but yes, um, it can be done, and with, with determination, we will get it done. Okay. Thank you. And we'd like to say one perfect love is our prayers and his blessings. When you put it all together, you get one perfect love, man. So Genevieve, thank you. We're going to we're gonna have you back again because this is sort of an ongoing conversation yeah, that, um, that I guess needs to be fresh in everybody's mind and so that everybody can act appropriately when they're supposed to. And, and like Soup says, you know, 10, 15, 20 people come together and just, you know, you know make a, a, a solid um, stand, stand firm, as Pressure likes to say. Yeah. And, and, and get things done around here so that we can all and your son coming up and yeah. and everybody else that's seven years old here when they get to be <laughs> young 18 19 years old things are better Absolutely. you know so we'll leave it at that i uh, just want to say real quick that this is the it's your perspective talk show every tuesday wednesday thursday our website is streaming live from the vi.com our telephone number is 340-201-9005 so on that note we're out tomorrow night we got the super dj himself ninja p sounds will be in the studio he'll be right there where genevieve is on his set blazing all the local bi reggae music on that note we're out peace